Now I think we all know that getting out into nature makes us feel good. I'm sure we've all experienced this and if you're an outdoor photographer like myself, you're always out and about in nature and you always feel revived and rejuvenated once you've done so. And obviously getting out, getting fresh air and moving around, it's going to make us feel good. But a few weeks ago, I learned the science behind why getting out into nature and particularly around things like moving water can have a profound impact on our well-being. And today, while I'm out creating photographs, I'm going to share this scientific knowledge with you in the hope that it might inspire you to get out and embrace nature as much as possible because the well-being benefits are quite simply amazing. <laughs> spring in the air again. I mean today is only the 7th of February but it feels like the temperatures are getting warmer, the days are definitely getting longer and if you look out to sea today there's got a very nice spring feel to it and I'm feeling definitely rejuvenated. If you watched my last video about winter and what this winter has taught me you'll know that I'm super excited to get out there and really embrace the season of spring and today I think is the beginning of that. I feel like I'm finding myself again. I'm getting out there, doing photography, and I've got a nice image idea already. My plan today had been to do ICM and multiple exposure photography, but I'm seeing a really good opportunity down there for some long exposure images. So I've set up with my tripod here, put my polarising filter on just to really darken down that beautiful turquoise colour that we've got in the sea. And I'm going to put a few different neutral density filters on just now. I need to play around with them to see which one is going to give me a long enough exposure to do what I want to do. But what I've decided to do is to, to photograph this in a square crop. I've got a real love for square crop long exposures just now and this all stemmed from a workshop that I did back in November where when we were at a harbour we started doing long exposure square crop images and I took this photograph here which I just absolutely fell in love with and there's a number of other ones I took that day as well and it just ignited my passion for this square crop long exposure feel. You know, it's something that a lot of photographers do, but it's something that I personally have not really dabbled in, but I'm enjoying dabbling in it now. So I'll get set up for this beautiful scene here behind me, long exposure shots, and we'll see how it turns out. As soon as I got set up with the camera, the sun went behind the clouds and the scene became quite flat and nowhere near as interesting. That beautiful colour that was present on the water, although you can still see it, it's not as obvious without the sun and to not have the sun on the cliffs as well, ah, a little bit frustrating, but I've taken the image regardless and I will show you it now. until I get home if an image is going to look okay or not but I feel like a location like this it seems very normal very maybe obvious to end up doing a long exposure image like what I just did of that scene so now I'm going to mix things up a little bit and I'm going to get out my long lens and I'm going to zoom in to the beautiful shapes and textures that we've got on the rock surface and try and do a little bit of multiple exposure imagery or maybe some abstract imagery photographing those beautiful textures and then trying to blend them together to create a totally different story something a little bit different to your your norm and I guess through showcasing this I hope that it'll show that 
one location as beautiful and as magnificent as this can be photographed in many different ways. I've just been messing around doing a number of multiple exposure images with my long lens, taking four images that the camera is and combining into one. And I've been doing that with the rocks and the cliff faces that we've got here by isolating parts of the cliffs that I feel look really interesting and then layering those images on top of each other to create a multiple exposure of shots. say that I was absolutely delighted with how these images turned out. It seems every time I do multiple exposure photography, I come away with something different, something exciting, and something that is really hard to replicate. And this final image here of gulls and filmers on the cliff is a combination of four images together. And I just love the abstract nature of this image. I was going to share with you today was the positive impacts and benefits should I say of getting out into nature and some scientific stuff that I discovered a few weeks ago in relation to this. Now there's loads of reasons why being in nature positively improves our well-being but the one thing I was learning about the other week was about positive and negative ions. So the sort of confusing thing about this is that negative ions are good for us and positive ions are bad for us. And positive ions are usually found in our homes, in hot and humid environments, in dusty places, um, in places with you know, air conditioning, central heating, and also around electronic devices. So when we spend a lot of time on our phones, on our laptops, or in front of the TV, we are literally surrounding ourselves with these positive ions. And these positive ions have a negative impact on our body. They basically make us quite sluggish, they slow us down, they can make us feel more depressed and anxious, and they just don't give us much vitality, basically. But when we're surrounded by negative ions, when we breathe these ions in, and they come into contact with our bloodstream, they help to produce the hormone serotonin, which as I'm sure many of you are aware, is one of the happiness hormones. So when we're out in places that are full of negative ions, which generally speaking is natural places, especially places around moving water. So if you go to the sea, for instance, especially when the sea is more choppy and wavy, or if you go to a waterfall or a water fountain, and even having a shower in your house can help with this as well you are going to be breathing in a lot of negative ions. And this is one of the reasons why when you have a shower, you often feel better because you're breathing in these beautiful ions, which are then releasing the hormone serotonin to help you feel good. It's like a natural way of just helping you to feel better, giving you more energy, giving you more motivation. And this is something I try and implement a lot into my work. You know, if I'm sitting at home doing a lot of computer work, I will try every few hours to take a break, to take some fresh air, to open the window or to go for a walk. And I find that doing that just completely resets me, gives me more energy and wants to help me keep going with my work. And that horrible sluggish, tired feeling that we often get when we spend days indoors can be lifted. As I'm sure you, you can all imagine, nowadays we are surrounded by more electricity, more technology and more indoor spaces that, are, that have central heating and that have air conditioning, including our cars as well. So we are now living in a world where we're feeling more sluggish, more anxious, more depressed, more stressed than ever before. And there's so many reasons for this. But I do genuinely feel that one of the biggest reasons for this is the, the fact that less and less people are spending reasonable amounts of time outdoors and in nature. And in fact, a lot of positive ions are also very prevalent in polluted areas. 
So if you live in a city or a busy town, you're going to be breathing in a lot of positive ions. Whereas if you're fortunate enough to live somewhere like I do in the northeast of Scotland, where there's a lot less pollution and chemicals in the air, you know, we are literally surrounded by negative ions, which help to uplift us. But I wanted to share that today because I do get asked quite a lot from people about, you know, what are the positive benefits of getting out into nature? Like, why do we feel so good? And now that I'm learning the science behind it, it's just making my understanding of it all so much better. But it's also something that I can now share with you guys to really implement that into your own lives and your own work. And if you think just getting out into nature and breathing these negative ions, the effect that has on our bodies and our our well-being and our moods, if you imagine then combining it with something creative like photography, which is giving you a creative outlet on top of all of that incredible science and, and mood boosting, breathing in of ions, it's incredible what this can do. And this has really always been part of my story. I've always known that for me, when I'm going through a tough time, getting out into nature and being creative just seems to take away the vast majority of my worries. And there's still things ruminating in my mind, of course there is, but it is so much easier to deal with than when you're stuck at home in that environment with no fresh air and you're just stuck in those thoughts and you've got no channel for them. But being outside, it can massively improve your well-being. And like I say, combining it with something creative like photography, the benefits are just tenfold. So I really wanted to share that with you today. Um, you know, if you're at the moment feeling quite sluggish, lacking in moods, you're struggling a bit with life, you know, if you can, potentially getting out into nature as much as possible might just give you that little bit of a boost that you need and might just help you to cope with your struggles a little bit more and give you that outlet and that breathing space, which is so incredibly important. And the sun has come out almost right on cue to really emphasise that point. Spring is in the air. I can really feel it. And just that slight warming of the temperature, no need to have a hat on and not really much need of gloves as well. And having that gorgeous warm sun on your face again, it just naturally makes you feel better. And as I spoke about in my last video about tying in with the seasons and embracing the seasons and thinking about what those seasons naturally make you want to do, spring is a time for rejuvenation. So if you feel like you need some rejuvenation right now, why not get out into nature, breathe in those positive ions, take your camera with you and get creative at the same time. Try something like multiple exposure photography. I don't know if any of the images I took today are any good, but I've enjoyed the process of trying and seeing what I can create and sharing the journey with you all. So yeah, it's just something there for you to consider and something that I felt really compelled to share today. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. I have so enjoyed getting out today and just vlogging like my old style vlogs. If you've missed this sort of vloggy style videos, let me know because I think it's something I, I'd like to do more of and get back into this year, as well as all the other content I've been creating recently that is hopefully educating you in some way and, and helping you and others. I do plan to release another challenge for you all soon, probably in March time to get back into that sharing and inspiring you to get out and embrace nature and connect with your camera and the world around you. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you all again next time.